Hello, my name is uh, Alex and welcome to the Datashed Assay Ranking Engine uh, webinar. Today we will be talking about the uh, uh, Ranking Engine, which is a uh, sort of powerful tool that is uh, used within Datashed. It allows you to uh, rank, uh, well, apply a filter uh, to your entire assay data set and quickly rank uh, only a select uh, filtered amount uh, of samples. Uh, you can also add additional columns to your assay flat table and uh, see uh, additional uh, units for your existing elements. You could apply a filter to a, a particular assay method uh, as well, or a repeat value. And uh, I'll be showing you some of the uh, functionality of the uh, assay ranking engine today. Right. Okay, so here's my uh, demonstration uh, database I've got open here. Today I'm just going to look at the diamond drilling uh, data set. So if I just double click that and open it. Now if I go to my assay management uh, module and I'm just going to look at my assay flat table for now. So if I just go open table. Okay, as you can see I've got data for my uh, drill set. So I've got a whole bunch of assays here, different uh, units. For the demonstration today, I'm uh, interested in cobalt. So I'm just going to get my cobalt uh, parts per million, and I'm just going to drag it over here by my gold. So as you can see, I've got uh, values for my samples for, for cobalt in parts per million. Now I'd like to see these values in parts per billion. So I need to add a new column to my uh, assay flat table. Now to do so, uh, you need to be able to access SQL. So for this demonstration to work, you really need to have SQL permissions or at least uh, be able to talk to your network administrator or whoever has access to your SQL instance so they can manipulate your assay flat table. So if I go to SQL now, and I'm just going to look at my database. So here's my uh, 463 demo database. If I go to my tables layout, as you can see, they're listed alphabetically. So I want to go into assay flat. That's the table of interest. That's the destination table that we're going to be applying mods on. So if I right click that guy and go design. So you can see there's a whole bunch of columns here. It's all the elements uh, or all the columns that are already existing in my assay flat table. So I need to add a new column into this existing table. So I've got cobalt parts per million. So if I click anywhere uh, on the table, in this instance right below cobalt, right click, insert column. And in this instance, I'm just going to copy cobalt and put it in the line below. And I'm going to rename it uh, cobalt uh, PV. Okay, click off anywhere. And now if you just press the save button over here, okay. So it's just uh, prompting me and letting me know that uh, it's going to make changes to the table. Yes. And more uh, warnings, but yes, I do want to make the changes. It's just letting me know that I'm applying changes. So just to clarify as well, previously I've already been in my tools, options. Okay, under designers, I've got table and database uh, designers. And I've got this button unticked, which is prevent save changes that require table recreation. If you don't do that, uh, in SQL, you will not be able to add a column in. So you have to ensure that that button is unticked. So that was just tools, options, table and database designers under the designers tab, and just make sure this guy is unticked here. Okay, so that's all we need to do in SQL for the time being. So we can minimize that. All right, so now we close everything down. I do want to save my column order. I've moved my cobalt over here and I do want to keep it there. Okay, so if we just refresh our uh, ODBC connection, the little lightning bolt up here, continue. And I want to find my demo database. Take a little while to think. Uh, it's got to load up all my extensions and other bits and pieces, so that might take a little while.
Okay. Okay. Loading extensions now. Okay, so we go back into our data set manager and load uh, the data set of interest. In this case, it's diamond drilling. So I'll select that one. Okay, so if I go back to my assay management module and under the assay flat tab. Okay, so if I scroll all the way to the right, you can see there's cobalt parts per billion. We've just added that column at the end of at the end past timestamp. So I just want to bring that guy and bring it all the way across to my other cobalt column. Right, so as you can see, the, the cobalt uh, column is empty. So we need to apply rules to, to populate this column uh, and we can do that by the right hand norm. So for now, I'm just gonna close this table and we'll come back to it. Yes, I wanna save my column order. So I'll always make sure that my cobalt parts per billion is next to my cobalt parts per million. Okay, so if we go up into the system administration button up here under the add-ins tab, and under the assay management, uh, sorry, under the uh, database structure tab, towards the bottom, you'll have an AM right hand assay. So the AM right hand assay essentially is the, the engine uh, that defines your assay flat. So assay flat is obviously a, a, a flattened table, uh, one row per sample. And assay flat is populated off of the combination of your DH sample uh, information combined with your raw DH assay um, table to define, to, to, to populate the assay flats one row per, per assay record. So if we go in here and go modify. Okay, so as I say, the right hand object is the TBL assay table and the left hand object is your uh, DH samples table, uh, PT samples table, um, any, any sort of sampling table that you've got. Uh, is what is linked on the uh, left hand side. So in this instance, this data set and sample ID comes from those um, other tables. So if we just look at the attributes. So this is just showing you all of the columns that are already in our assay flat and uh, what has been used to, to populate those columns in the table. So if we look at uh, cobalt for now, okay, cobalt parts per million is a preferred value calc, sys result, single six. So what it's saying is that it is uh, filling in the, the cobalt parts per billion with um, looking at the system sys results column in your assay table. So in this instance, um, cobalt is the preferred unit. And if you're unsure of what the preferred unit is for an element, the easiest way to find out is to go uh, back to the um, assay management uh, uh, system admin, sorry, and then under asset management. Okay, so we have an elements library here. These are all live libraries so that you can click on them and uh, you can see the actual live data in the database. So if we sort by element in this instance and we go down to cobalt, so you can see that cobalt has a preferred system unit of parts per million, okay? So in this example, I want to start seeing cobalt in parts per billion. So whenever you're uh, setting up a new column in your assay flat, you always have to go from whatever the preferred unit is into your conversion. So in this instance, I'm going from parts per million to parts per billion. And if you're unsure about what conversion factors to use, you can go down here and click on the conversion factors um, tab. So again, if we sort the code uh, alphabetically, okay. So in my example, um, I'm going from a preferred unit of parts per million on the left-hand side, it's from, 
and I want to convert it into parts per billion. So PPM to PPB has a conversion factor of 1,000. So that factor needs to be applied uh, when we're populating the values in the SIS-AS flat, uh, in, in the tbl -A flat uh, table. Okay, so if I go back to my um, right-hand norm, okay, so I'm going to create a new column at the bottom here, and the column name is going to be called COPPB, which matches what we've already established in our uh, SQL instance, and it's already in the tbl -A flat. Okay, so I'm going to use a preferred value calc based off the SIS result. Six. Okay, so essentially I'm going to be looking for the element from my assay, raw assay table, and the element's going to be cobalt. And then the other thing I need to do is a conversion. So as we said, we're going to be converting uh, parts per million results into parts per billion results by applying a conversion factor of 1,000. Okay. So now we've set up rules for cobalt uh, parts per billion to be filled uh, from our raw assay table. So this is all we need to do in here for now. Okay. So if I have a look at my assay management again, and I'm just going to look at my assay normalised, otherwise known as my uh, raw assay table. Okay, as you can see, uh, if we just filter here for any sample ID, uh, you can see there's multiple rows per sample. So each row consists of one element. Uh, so there is, um, yeah, quite a lot of uh, information in here. So if I clear my filter, so based on that data set alone, I've got 15,974 rows in here. All I care for is where element equals uh, cobalt. So to quickly uh, define a filter for the raw assay table, I'm going to apply a filter on it. So if I go back to my assay normalised, you go right click and define filter. I'm going to have where element equals cobalt. So if I open that up again, okay. So you can see from the 15,000 plus uh, original samples that I had, I've now defined it down to 883. So if I get that list there of 883 uh, samples with a cobalt uh, element, that is my filter that I'll be applying for my assay ranking engine. So I'll minimize this now and I'll show you uh, how, it, how it works. So again, under uh, our assay management, we've got the sample register. So I need to apply a filter on my sample register for only the samples that I want to rank. Uh, for example, if you uh, had 100 samples that were used to, using a particular assay method and then you got them reassayed again and you didn't want to re-rank your whole database, you can apply a filter on your raw assay table and find just those 100 samples that you've got reassayed using a different uh, assay method, and then populate those filtered samples into your um, sample register and then run the ranking engine. So uh, if I go back to my filtered list, okay, so I'm just gonna select these samples, and I am going to filter my sample register. So if I go sample ID, edit sample list. Oh, I didn't keep my filtered list. Let me try again. Okay, sample ID, copy. Okay, edit sample list. Okay. So now in my sample register, I've got a filter of 837 samples, distinct samples in there. Okay. 
Yeah. Right. So now if I go sample ID, sample ID is in the sample list, and then I add a criteria. Oh, something happened with my filter there. Let me try again. Okay. As I normalise. Sample register, define filter. Okay, so there's my list, my sample register. Right, let's try applying that filter. Okay, so now in my sample register, applied a list of samples that only only samples that have got a cobalt element associated to them right so now if I go up here under the advanced assay tools okay and if you go to the assay ranking engine tab so the table to process is the TBL assay and I only want to re-rank uh, currently filtered sample register so rather than re-ranking the entire data base or, or entire data set, I'm literally going to go, I'm going to re-rank 887 samples. So this is a much faster and uh, precise way to, to re-rank certain uh, samples. So if I run this guy, just going to take a second. Okay. So now if we go back to our assay flat, You can see that cobalt parts per billion has been populated uh, based on the, the rules that we set uh, in the right-hand norm. So you can see that the conversion has been done correctly because uh, obviously parts per billion are a thousand times or a factor of a thousand more than parts per million. So the results are correct. If you're unsure uh, of your conversion, you could always apply a filter uh, to the uh, sample register and only have one sample and just test that your conversion is correct. In this instance, we've done the right thing and the conversion is correct um, and has worked. So obviously you can see where cobalt parts per million is blank, parts per billion, parts per billion will also be blank. So essentially we've just populated this guy. Um, as I say, if you um, have uh, assays with a new method, and you want to apply a filter for just those assays, you could apply the same sort of filter rules in your raw assay table. For example, I'm just going to look in here, uh, say where original method equals ICP302. So that's now going to show uh, all of the assays with that method. You could then go to the next level where you have um, a certain element. So, uh, for example, I could do where element equals AG. So if you can keep applying more and more things to your filter, so you're only going to re-rank uh, which ex exact samples you want to um, see in the flat table. And essentially, that is the uh, the assay ranking engine, uh, and that's how it works in in data shed. Um, that is the end of today's presentation. Um, yeah, if you've got uh, any questions, please uh, flick me an email at uh, amini at maxgeo.com, um, and that's the uh, the end for today.